right, I'd like to call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Town Select Board uh, at uh, 6.30 p.m. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes from May 8th, 2023. I motion we approve the minutes of May 8th, 2023. Second. All right, hearing a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. All righty. Our first new business is a uh, poll hearing for the... They're not here. Eversource. Uh, they're on Zoom. Ah, oh. On Zoom. Wonderful. Okay. Welcome. Um, I'll turn that over to you to start the poll hearing. Um, do you want to start the... Do, I, uh, do we need to vote in, don't we? You could just... Say it's okay. at 6.30, we're starting. Yeah. Right. Well, it's 6.30 p.m., so we will start the poll hearing. There we go. Um, so I'll, I'll just do a brief introduction. A couple months ago, we had a poll hearing um, to uh, add some additional lines and, and I think move a poll um, on Route 47 um, when they did the surveying, um, they discovered that one of the locations was not, property lines were not where they thought they were. So they're coming back um, a, with a, an updated plan. Is that right, Jesse? Correct. Okay. Um, we, we sent the details to the highway uh, superintendent um, who had no concerns with the additional location. Um, and in fact, said that um, the utility has been very help, um, forthcoming in letting him know when they're going to be out and when they think they're going to be doing work and things like that. So very cool. Okay. Thank you. Um, and we do have somebody from the population who would like to discuss it. Um, did you have some comment you wanted to make? Well, I hadn't seen any plans or heard anything about it until the letter came. Uh, are these poles located on the west side or the east side of Rule 47? They are west, on the river side or on the other side? Other side. Yeah, there's a, uh, yeah, they're on the the non-river side. On the, on the, okay. So this is the river side. Okay, so actually that doesn't affect my properties at all. All right, that's all. That's fine. All right. Cool. Not, it doesn't affect anything on Ferry Road, does it? Yeah, they're going down yeah, Ferry Road so with the they're putting them in duct the system. Right. It won't be on any land, though. It'll be in the road. The manhole will be in the road. Correct. Because I know that the power line, underground power lines, go under my right of way. Mm -hmm. It's not going to affect that at all. No, it's it's a new circuit. So this it's is a, a new, new line. Will be in the road. This new line will be going through under the road. Correct. All the way. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's all I was worried about. <laughs> okay. That's why we hold these hearings, to make sure that everybody <laughs> has a chance to ask the questions they need to ask, to make sure they're happy with it. Can't say much, it's not on my land or affecting it. <laughs> yep. All right, um, Jeff, do you need us to vote on anything, or? Uh, yes, I need you to vote to approve it, and then I will ask you to sign some stuff after the meeting. Okay. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Crystal, do you have anything you want to talk about? Um, no, I mean, they already had the approval anyways. It was just the, the poll location now is the only thing we're approving, correct? Correct. Yep. All right. Hearing no more discussion, I would entertain a motion to accept the revised plan from Eversource. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Three nothing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Coming out.
and I'm going to close the uh, poll hearing at 6.35. All right. Thank you very much for coming out. Thank you very much, Jesse. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Have a great one. Almost All righty. Um, next uh, item of new business is the kayak lending program update. Please take it away. Hi. Thank you guys for having me. We're really excited about this program. Um, I'm Catherine Monstock, Director of Sunderland Public Library. Um, this program's been, we've been working on it, um, I checked my emails, it's been five years since I've been working on it, but six years since I've been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. We're really excited to actually have this go into action very soon. Um, we especially want to thank our partners at Venture East, um, who actually donated the kayaks, the paddles, the equipment, provided a huge amount of guidance to make sure that we're doing this as safely as possible, um, and to make sure our patrons have all the appropriate information they need before they get out on the river. Um, but we're gonna be loaning out um, three different kayaks to our patrons. We have two singles and one tandem kayaks that people can choose from. Um, they're all the kind that you sit on top of, um, which is easier for beginners to, to use. And what people are actually gonna borrow from us is a little wet bag, dry bag <laughs> here. Um, and what's inside of it is a key to the storage locker in Riverside Park. Um, so each key um, will let you into the appropriate kayak that you're borrowing, as well as the, um, the cabinet that has all the paddles and life vests and everything. Um, Adventure East also really helped us out by, um, we put together a safety guide that just kind of shows patrons, um, you know, how to check the river conditions to see what the flow is. Um, how to review the weather conditions before they paddle. Um, and then we also worked with a graphic designer to create um, just a little map of where we hope people will kayak. The green section is good for beginner paddlers, yellow if you have experience, and red we do not recommend is dangerous to, to kayak there. So we hope that folks will follow the map as best they can. Um, really, I just wanted to thank a huge list of people um, who made this all possible, um, especially Adventure East, the owner Brian Pearson, and then the employees uh, Brad Walker and Amy Jean Aubin have been hugely instrumental in making this happen for us. Um, Jeff Kravitz <laughs> has been a huge help in organizing everything, especially with the construction of the kayak kiosk and then putting us in touch with the town insurers and town council to make sure that they approved the policies that everyone signed. Um, the Board of Library Trustees have been very supportive of me. Um, the select board, current and past, has been extremely helpful. Um, we also had a advisory committee that was John Zachary, formerly of the Board of Library Trustees, David Pierce, formerly of the select board, and Gary Breer, who is a very active patron in town who does a lot of kayaking and other outdoor activities. They really helped me put together the policies and kind of envision how this program is going to work. Um, the Community Preservation Committee um, gave us some funding to construct the kayak kiosk in Riverside Park. They were absolutely very helpful in that. Um, and then Rayman, Naomi Darling, and the students at the UMass School of Architecture um, did, worked to design the kayak kiosk for us, which was also a huge, um, huge benefit for us. Um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of other people who helped, but yeah, it's not been um, a solo thing, so we're really excited to be able to actually reward everyone for all their hard work. <laughs> We're also working with the Connecticut River Conservancy and Adventure East to do a, um, an official launch and kayak safety class. Um, so we're offering three kayak safety classes um, that are free for people to participate in. Um, you do have to register on our website because there's limited space in them, um, but um, we are finalizing the, the official launch date, but that's gonna be followed by a reception at Adventure East that we're excited about to really celebrate the, the kickoff of this program. Um, do you guys have any questions for me about it? So is there like some type of policy on what people have to leave? Do they have to leave your credit card? Do they have to leave something with you before they get that bag? 
Yes, so they, um, they need to have a library card. Um, library cards require um, us to see their, their driver's license, have a mailing address, all that contact information. Um, we need to see some form of ID that has like an address on it, so like a driver's license or something, which we'll photocopy um, and keep at the library for at least two weeks after they, um, the borrow period, um, just in case there's anything that happens. And then patrons also have to sign off um, on two pretty hefty documents. One is the kayak loan policy, that's just they agree to all the, um, the items. And then there's also a um, town council gave it a much more legalese name than I'm used to, but it's a release of liability for the town of Sunderland and, and the library saying that patrons accept the responsibility that kayaking is dangerous and you know we're giving them all the information they need to be safe but it's ultimately up to them when and you know when they kayak so. and then is there a drop box for people who come in who come back after the yes exactly so um, the reason why we don't actually check out the whole kayak it's much easier to give them the key in the bag and they can put these in our regular book return um, drop box which is um, on the outside of the building, mm -hmm. and um, patrons borrow these for three days. So that gives them the opportunity to decide when is best for them mm -hmm. to kayak. So if they want to go out for a sunrise kayak at you know six in the morning or something, they don't have to wait for the library to open at ten o'clock or one p.m. Um, to to borrow this and to use the kayak. So it gives them a little flexibility. If it rains or something, um, they may have a couple of other days to use it too. Just to clarify, they can re borrow the bag. Yes. leave the kayak where it is until they're ready to use it and they don't have to keep possession of that kayak for the full three days right okay. no exactly they just have access to the kayak for okay. the three days um and the possession of the kayak is limited to um the kayak kiosk and the connecticut river um mm -hmm. we don't want anyone taking the kayak to another location um everything is based on the kayak staying in this general vicinity um, and we do have little carts that um, folks can use to, to pull the kayaks down to the river. Um, so um, we don't want anyone to go by themselves, but one person can pretty easily move a kayak. I was able, in my very pregnant state, <laughs> was able to move the tandem one on the cart myself, and it was okay. So <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now how? How many more kayaks could you fit there with the space that you Just have? Just three, yeah. It's, that's so all. it'll never be more than three? No, not okay. unless we, the town wants to construct a larger kiosk, but we're very happy with what we have. And this seems manageable to us um, mm. as something that's free. And then um, with our partners with Adventure East, if folks want to do like a larger event, um, we have a great resource right in town where folks could actually rent a kayak. It just would be at a cost. Okay. And it's free. It's free. It's completely free. Yeah, absolutely free. free for library patrons to borrow okay. the library kayaks. Great. I would just add thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Obviously, <laughs> this was your idea, and you executed it. Um, you got funding for it. Um, not directly related, related to the kayak kiosk, but that was the town's uh, contribution for the park grant that enabled us to... Um, put the, the sidewalk down to the river walk and um, do some other things around the park. So that was that was very helpful as well. Yeah, the construction of the kayak kiosk was a collaborative um, to do several other improvements with Riverside Park. So we're really happy that we were able to make it happen. And it wouldn't have happened without the, the Riverside Park grant either, Jeff, because um, of course costs went through the roof in the <laughs> years that it took us to get, get things going. Really? Things got more expensive? Than <laughs> I know, it's shocking, right? <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Who is it? Please. Uh, is there any restriction on who can use it if, um, upon their ability or training? In other words, you don't just get in a kayak and go. Do you require them to have at least a basic kayaking course? We do not, no. So part of the, um, the liability and everything that folks sign off on is that they will use the kayak safely and that they are physically fit enough and understand the, the dangers of, of doing it. It's definitely not a program for everyone, um, but you do have to be of a certain age. No children um, under 10 can use it. If they are children, they have to have a parent sign off. So there's a whole lot of steps folks have to jump through, but yes, it's 
not for everyone, not absolute beginners um, should be doing it, but ultimately we have no way of proving that folks have, have taken any kind of training, but we are offering the free training that the library that we hope people will take advantage of. And there are life vests in the, yes, that they yeah. take too, they, right? They, they're signing that they will use the life vests. <laughs> So it's just standard rules. They don't have to wear the life vest. It just has to be on the kayak, or they no, have to they're actually... signing that they will wear the wear, wear the it. life vest at all times. Okay. okay. And again, if they choose to break that rule, they've signed a waiver they saying that they've taken responsibility they for themselves, and yeah. we can't control for what people choose to do and not do. And they make bad decisions for themselves. Exactly. You know, it's like the same thing. We can't control what people do with the books they borrow. And sometimes things come back torn or stained and you know dropped in the tub or whatever, and they pay their $25 fine or whatever it is. But um, for kayaks, of course, the consequences are much more serious. So we really try to drive that home for everyone that this is not um, a risk-free, fun activity. This is something that you need to be aware of the risks of what you're doing when you do it. It's like a city bike. It's the same, same thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I just, yeah. we kayak often, and you don't have to actually wear the vest. You have to just have it on, on, the, on, the, kayak. on the kayak. That's why I was asking if their roles are different. Yeah, yeah, I guess our, our roles are different, but of course we're not going to be there supervising. That depends on also the time of year. Yes. Yeah, and we, uh, the staff also have the ability to just say the kayaks are not available. If we look at the weather and it's not good <laughs> um, for the next three days or the river conditions, um, like right now we're not loaning the kayaks because the river is way too fast for beginners. Um, so we have a way to check the river conditions and patrons can access that too through a website that we have. And we have a little guide that says, okay, this speed is good for beginners. This speed, if you have paddling experience, if it's above this speed, you do not go on the river. And um, staff have the ability to just say, no, it's not going to be safe for you, for you to borrow it at this time. So I'm sorry. Okay. Anything else? I'm good. That's it. Oh, well, thank you for the update. Yeah. I'm very excited about the program. I, when I heard about it, I thought it was a wonderful idea. And thank you. If you have any other great ideas, please bring them to us. We'll be happy to hear them. I will. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't take five or six years to yes. implement them next time, but we'll you know. <laughs> but thank you guys. I really appreciate your support and for listening to me today. Absolutely. Thank you for coming yeah. in. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. All right. Our next uh, new order of business is uh, the Juneteenth holiday, um, and that's the police department taking the Juneteenth holiday, is that correct? Correct. So last year, so town meeting 2022, uh, the holiday bylaw was amended to include Juneteenth, um, but the contract with the police department has not been amended to include Juneteenth. So last year, the select board voted to award, regardless of the contract, that, that day as a holiday for, for the police. So I wanted to raise that again. Just for context, when's the next time that the union contract would be up for negotiation in which this could be you know, codified in their actual contract? Uh, fiscal year 24 is the final year of the contract. So by so June 30th, 2025, 2024. Sorry. Okay, so a year-ish a year from now, yeah, it should be, be able to. So this might be the last time we're having to. That is my hope. One more. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So I, I'm fairly, you know, uh, we've done yeah. it before. Um, is there anyone who'd like to discuss this? Any more information? No. Okay. Yeah. All right. I will entertain a motion to uh, grant the uh, members of our police force Juneteenth holiday off, in addition to their normal contracted days. Yeah, I motion we give the police department the Juneteenth holiday this year. Second. All right. We have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Not hearing any discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three nothing. All right. That is it for new business. Uh, coming up for old business, we have select board and committee appointments. Yeah, there, um, last week, uh, you appointed Crystal to the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight. Um, just wasn't sure if you guys 
we're going to be doing more appointments coming up in June. I didn't know if you had had any more thoughts or um, wanted to put anybody in any of the, um, the vacant seats. Do we know if any of the vacant seats are, have meetings pending between now and then? Or are these all things that are probably not going to meet until after that? Um, the South County EMS might, but I don't know. I, I have not seen an agenda. Okay. And that was something you wanted to That store, is right? something I'm interested in. Is, but if someone else has a deep huge desire to do it, I will. I am happy to have you on there. You have the most experience in the field. And I agree with that. So, <laughs> I, personally, and feel free to chime in, I'm happy with just adding Crystal to that one in case they meet between now and then, and the rest of them just leaving vacant until, I mean, it's a month, and then we'll fill them at the time where we're going to be going. And that way, other ones would be up on the table, and we can shift things around and discuss and negotiate in a way that, you know, isn't do it twice in a month. Yep. <laughs> um, all right, so I would uh, entertain a motion to appoint Crystal to the um, the, board, the Board of Oversight for the South County EMS. So moved. All right, and I'm assuming you're not going <laughs> to. All right, I will second that. Um, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, two nothing. Great. Okay. And thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, uh, next up is select board updates. Um, I did want to start off by saying I'm sorry I didn't mention this last meeting. It slipped my mind, um, but I wanted to thank the fire department for the wonderful 90th anniversary party. Um, brought the kids out. It was a lot of fun. There were marshmallows. There was cool old fire trucks and cool new fire trucks and a lot of stuff to do and a lot of people to talk to and a lot of kids there and good food and um, Representative Blay made it out, and you know it was just a great time all around. Um, and so thank you to the chief and to the fire department for bringing it on, uh, as well as the numerous people I know that worked um, in addition to just the members of the police of the fire department um, in order to set up things and get funding for it and volunteer and all that kind of stuff. So thank you everybody. That was great. The um, the bonfire was ginormous, <laughs> and I could see it from my house when I got home. So uh, definitely a success, and uh, I'm glad that they did that and that it was. Uh, so much fun for everybody. Um, that's all I have. Anyone else have any select board updates they'd like to go over? Yeah, I mean, you guys saw the letter and stuff for South County yep. Senior Center, so that's the only update I have was they had a meeting last week and Jeff and I attended and there were no, no decisions made, no anything really to report back other than that letter. Well, speaking of that letter, is that something that we need to mention in open session and or vote on or anything, or is that just? No, uh, just a letter. Of just a letter that you're, I mean, you, you're more than welcome to. Um, it's a letter It's a letter of support for a grant that the South County Senior Center is applying for. Okay. For senior services. Transparency is always a good thing, yeah. so there we are. Yeah. Um, so yes, the select board is, is signing a letter to a couple of different recipients uh, in support of uh, the grant for the South County Senior Center um, to help move that project along and uh, get the building you know, fixed up and whatnot. So. All right, that would be it for select board updates, unless anyone else has anything else. Uh, let's kick it over to you, Jeff, for town minister updates. All right, um, let's see. I met with the rec coordinator um, last week and at some point in the next couple of weeks I think it would be good to have him in here to discuss sort of the overall plan for Riverside Park and um, what type of recreational services we want to be offering. There seem to be some residents who are interested in supporting the recreation committee how, or the recreation department, how best can they do that? So I'm gonna invite them in to talk about some of those things. Um, we also talked about the Memorial Day parade, which is not on Memorial Day, but the Friday before it. Um, and that is gonna happen. Uh, we meet here at 12 School Street, walk down South Main to the cemetery, um, or if it's raining, we'll go to the elementary school, have the ceremony, come back. Um, so hopefully uh, he's working on getting a band and, and all those things for that. Um, 
This Friday at 2 p.m. is the ribbon cutting for Sanderson Place. So that's exciting. Um, and then the following day, I'll put a plug in since Catherine didn't, is the book sale and tag sale, the library book sale and tag sale. So Saturday um, here at the library and behind the town office building. So those are my updates. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and then, sorry, last one was, we talked a little bit last week about the summer schedule and I put together a tentative proposal um, that more or less gives you every other week off with some not, but basically meetings on next week, take Memorial Day week off, meet June 5th and 12th if we need to, um, or one of those two. The 19th is Juneteenth, don't meet that week. Meet the week of the 26th. Don't meet the week of July 4th. Meet the following week. Don't meet the week of the 17th. Meet the following week. Don't meet the week of the 31st. Meet August 7th. Don't meet the 14th. Meet either the 21st or the 28th or both. Um, Labor Day is the 4th. And then we go back into weekly meetings after that. So, you know, I, there are a couple dates in June and August where we have back-to-back -back meetings. If there's nothing going on, we can cancel one or both of them. Probably not both, because we probably don't want to go three weeks without a meeting or four, but... Um, and we can do that within a week's notice. So if we decide on one one week that we don't need to one the next week, we can... Yeah, we can before. do that, you know, as long as we do it by Thursday. Okay. Fine. Could you have need to have how many days notice? For not having a meeting, we don't. Oh, but, no. oh. <laughs> we, um, but yeah, if we're having it, we need to post it 48 hours okay. on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. All right. Great. So if there are no objections, that's what we'll be going for. And, and you know, if something comes up and we need to meet on a not meeting week, we can always meet. It's, you know, nothing's in stone. So. And we do have the option still of remote. Yep. Yeah. Anyone happens to be away or not that you know under mind or anything. Yeah, because <laughs> when I look through it I'm like I'm away two of the the ones, so well, luckily it's mostly uh small fires, nothing huge in the middle of the summer. So. Alright. Um anyone else have anything they'd like to discuss? Alright. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion we adjourn. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three nothing. Please take us out at 658.